So welcome to Honey Out of the Rock. Uh, Jesus is the rock. We have the milk of the word, we have the meat of the word, and we have honey out of the rock. And Jesus Christ is the rock. Um, so what we've been speaking on, what I've been teaching on, is the different ways that the Holy Spirit leads and guides us in our life as Christians. Okay, there's eight different divine leadings of the Holy Spirit. Of course, the first way is the Word of God. God never does anything outside of His Word. As Christians, we need to know the written Word of God so that we can judge things. Okay, the second thing is our conscience. We've got to keep our conscience tender. When we make a mistake or we hurt someone or we do something wrong, we always want to confess it to keep our conscience tender. The third way is the inward witness of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bear witness with our spirit about everything if we listen. Romans 8.16 The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're a child of God. The Holy Spirit will bear witness about everything in our life if we'll listen to our inward man. The fourth way is the word of confirmation. Um, many times throughout the word of God when you read it, you'll read, read repeats. Like, for instance, uh, Joel said in the last days God would pour out His Spirit um, onto all flesh. Our sons and daughters would prophesy. Young men would see visions. Old men would dream dreams. Okay, And then in the book of Acts, you read the same thing. Okay. okay, then we have the voice of the Holy Spirit. And in today's world, we hear many preachers say the voice of God, listen to the voice of God. But they don't distinguish the different ways it comes, okay? Because many times we're not to seek a voice or hear a voice, though God has spoken in His voice. His word is His written word. The rhema that comes to our inner man is the spoken word of God to our spirit, okay? The voice of the Holy Spirit has come many times in the scriptures. It came to Philip where it says the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go join thyself to thy chariot. But the reason why not, we're not supposed to seek voices is because in the realm of temptation, in the realm of our mind, we can hear many voices, okay, and we can get confused. That's why God likes to speak to our inward man into the witness of the spirit where you don't get confused in your spirit man, okay? Then we have visions. We have open visions, closed eye visions, and trances. And we taught on that last week. If you want to go back and watch that, okay? They're the picture messages from God, okay? And dreams are involved in this too, which we're going to be teaching on tonight. Dreams and angels and even divine visitations from Jesus Christ himself in the scripture, okay? So we have, like on your cell phone, okay, we have text message. It's silent. It's words, but you know what it says, but it's not a voice, then we have voicemail that comes that you listen to, you hear it with your physical ears. When the voicemail of God comes into our life, it comes inside of us. We hear it inside of us, ourselves with our spiritual ears, but it's so real, it sounds like someone talking to us. Okay, and also speakerphone, okay, word of confirmation. When God speaks more than uh, two or three times to you, something in a similar way, um, speakerphone. Everyone hears it, including you. You hear it with your physical ears. Okay? Then we have picture messages from God. Sometimes, you know, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would say, this is too much to, to show them in an inward witness. This is too much to, sh to tell them through a voice. We have to send them a picture message because a picture speaks more than a thousand words. And so the picture messages from God are visions and dreams. Okay, we spend, you know, one-third of our life sleeping. And um, believe it or not, God has spoken in the scriptures many times to people when they're sleeping. Okay, in the Old Testament, we have, um, you know, even Ablimimic. Um He had a dream to not take Sarah as his wife, for she is a married woman, okay? And then we have um, Joseph. You know, in the New Testament, um, God's showing him in a dream, take the baby Jesus to Egypt, okay? Take the baby Jesus away from here because Herod is going to try and kill the baby Jesus, okay? These are dreams of warning. 
God showed Abimelech not to take Sarah as, as his wife because Sarah belonged to Abraham, okay? And then Jesus, I mean, Joseph was warned to take Jesus to Egypt to basically save Jesus' life because what happened after that? All the baby boys under the age of two were slaughtered in Jerusalem and the outskirts all around that area. Every baby boy under the age of two was killed. But Joseph escaped because of a dream. Okay. So God can speak to us in a dream at night sometimes as a warning um, to protect us. Okay. Then we have, you know, Joseph in the Old Testament having an interpretation of a dream about a famine coming for seven years. Okay. So if your name is Joseph, um, you're a dreamer in the Bible. But all of us can have dreams. We all, we all sleep at night. Now how do we ter determine what a dream from God is or what a dream from ourselves, our own subconsciousness? Or we can even have a dream from the enemy, okay? And how do we determine? We always have to go back to the Word of God, okay? We always have to know the Scriptures and what they say, okay? But dreams can come as comfort, too. And I'm going to give some examples of this. You know, Joseph in the New Testament, um, they, you know, Joseph had a dream because he was going to put away Mary. And uh, at Christmas time, this is the Christmas story. Um, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for inside of her is the Holy Son of God who will take away the sins of the people. Okay, the Savior of the world. Uh, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Okay, a dream of comfort because, you know, in his natural thinking, he was going to put away Mary because she was pregnant before she was married, but what was in her was the Holy Son of God. Okay, now while we're on this, why is the virgin birth so crucial? It's because the blood in our body comes from our Father. And Jesus had the blood of God in his body. And so that blood could be shed for the sins of mankind. Okay? The virgin birth is critical in our Christianity. Okay? Jesus had no human father. His father was God. Okay? And of course, he was in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? That's Jesus Christ. Okay, so dreams of comfort. Okay, I'm going to tell you a couple stories in my in my family's life where my mother had a dream of comfort. She said when you know her dad was sick for quite a while, and um, she had a dream one night that there was church bells ringing very loudly and very, you know, in an amazing way. You know, if you ever heard a cathedral with church bells, you know, just ringing. And when she woke up, she knew in her inner man, through the witness of the Spirit, that her dad had passed into heaven. Well, that's a dream of comfort. God showing my mother that your dad's with me now. And then my own brother um, felt really bad because the week that my dad had died, um, he hadn't talked to my dad for quite a while and he felt really, really bad about it because he was so busy working. So he has a dream one night that my dad calls him on the phone and he says, uh, John, hey, how you doing? And my brother says, I'm sorry, Dad, I haven't talked to you for so long. He says, don't worry about me, I'm doing better than ever. And so sometimes God will give us a dream of comfort um, and give us a picture message in our sleep that tells us and shows us that, hey, um, your dad is with me now. Or, you know, he's in heaven, so don't worry. John, don't feel bad because he's in a better place. Okay, so dreams of comfort are in the Word of God. Again, Matthew one twenty, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For inside of her is the Holy Son of God. Okay? 
okay, conceived by the Holy Spirit, okay? And we have dreams of destiny in the Word of God, and uh, one of the best scriptures for this is in Genesis chapter 28, where Jacob had a dream where uh, the stairway went from the earth to heaven. I mean, that's a mighty stairway. And it says at the top of the stairway was the Lord. And the Lord said to Jacob, you know, there was angels ascending and descending up and down the ladder. And the Lord said to Jacob that he would be blessed, um, that like the sand of the sea would his descendants be, just like he said to Abraham. And that out of him, out of Jacob or out of Israel, all nations would be blessed on the earth. And so Jacob had this amazing dream of, of destiny. So we can have a dream that comes to us from God that's about our destiny. Okay? Every one of us has a destiny, you know? Uh, Jesus Christ came to this earth to die for our sins as God's best gift to us so that really we could enter our destiny in Him. So God's gift back our gift back to God is to give him our life. And when we give him our life, um, we start to enter into our God-given destiny because it's found in Jesus Christ. We have a high calling in Christ Jesus. Okay, We can be out of the will of God. We can be in God's permissive will. Or we can be in the perfect will of God. And that's what we all need to find is the perfect will of God. And the perfect will of God is found in Jesus Christ. Okay? He has a divine destiny for our life. So, angels seem to be um, mentioned a lot in the dreams in the Bible. Okay? Angels, um, you know, even Cornelius had a vision of an angel coming towards him. Okay? Um, Jesus said in Matthew 18.10 that don't despise these little ones for I tell you the truth that even um, their angels behold the face of my Father in heaven every day. Okay. So we have angels from God that are with us from the time we're, we're children. Probably even born. Okay. And we have angels with us to protect us. Psalm 91, 11. You know, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You know, angels play a big part in the plan of God for our lives. Whether we've seen one or not. You know, most of us probably will never see an angel. But you can experience them, you know. I fell down this landscape once, one of the steepest hillsides I've ever worked on, and I fell down it. And there's no explanation of how I didn't get hurt beyond a few bruises, and how I didn't end up going all the way down the hill into the street down below that was a busy street. Um, and this was a very big hill, 80 feet tall. And, and I fell down, you know, about halfway down, and somehow I stopped. And I tumbled down, uh, you know, several walls and part of the stairway I built. And, and somehow I was able to get up and keep working that day without any injuries other than some bruises. And so angels are around us. They protect the people of God. They protect believers, you know. Angels are very real even though we might not see them, okay. Uh, the angels ministered to Jesus in the wilderness after he fasted for 40 days. After a 40-day fast, if you don't eat, you, you starvation sets in and you'll die. Okay, Nobody was in the wilderness with Jesus except for Satan when he came to tempt him. Okay, But it says he was there with the wild animals. The angels came to minister to Jesus after he fasted for 40 days. Okay? Um, Jesus talks about that he's going to return with his holy angels. And, and then it talks about in Revelation 5 that there's thousands upon thousands, 10,000 times 10,000. In other words, innumerable angels around the throne of God. Okay, I had this vision once of, of uh, 
angels waiting for their assignment, um, waiting for the prayers of the saints coming in. And Jesus Christ was dispatching his angels to go on tasks. And so we can't imagine how important it is for us to pray. Okay, because when we pray, the Lord goes to fight our battles for us. He goes to make things happen that we can't make happen in the spiritual dimension. Okay, you know, we hear a lot of, of talk these days about how powerful Satan is and how powerful and, and the work that he's doing. Let's all quit talking about how powerful it is is because Jesus Christ crushed his power on the cross. Okay, it says in Genesis that, that you know, the, the seed of the woman was going to crush the serpent's head, crush his power, and that's Jesus Christ. He's the seed of the woman all the way back to Genesis. Okay, and, and okay, uh, Jesus Christ heel got bruised, but through that bruising, we are healed. Okay, by his stripes we are healed. Jesus said that, that um, I've given all power and authority over you, over the enemy. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, Jesus Christ says I give you the keys of the kingdom. In my name you shall, okay, cast out devils. Okay, you shall heal the sick, okay. Jesus Christ's name is above every name in the universe. And at his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. Start talking about how great your God is. Start speaking about how awesome he is. Start speaking about how powerful your God is. Start speaking that he defeated all the evil on this planet. And he gave us the authority and the power over it, okay? Start confessing that he is your God and he is more powerful than anything. And that the living Jesus Christ, he is Lord, okay? Jesus said that Satan has no place in him. You know, Jesus Christ as the Ancient of Days, okay? He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Jesus was the one that came down in the Old Testament and spoke to his friend Abraham. Even though he wasn't Jesus then, because Jesus is his humanity name. Christ is deity, but he's the great I am. He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. And it said he was with two angels. Okay, there's different types of angels in the word of God. There's ministering angels. There's praise angels, praise and worship angels, okay? Lots of times when we're worshiping God, it'll almost be like there's just a few people in the room, but it sounds like a whole bunch. It sounds like a chorus. It sounds like a multitude is singing with you because the angels come and join in and worship. Even though we might not see them, sometimes you can almost hear it, that it's way beyond two or three or four people worshiping God. It sounds like a hundred or two hundred. And so these angels, Paul talks about that sometimes that we entertain angels unaware. Hebrews 13, 2. You know, where um, they're around us and we might not even be aware that they're an angel. Okay. Um, one time I was working and I was trying to move a big stone and I couldn't budge it and a person come walking down the street and actually help me move that stone and in in hu in our humanity you can't move it but you know maybe God sent me an angel right there to help me even with the stone um, and an angel unaware it says that sometimes we entertain angels unaware so we never want to discount God on what's he, what he wants to do there's also many stories of, of Muslims um, having dreams of Jesus, okay? Because God will speak even to unbelievers in a dream if he needs to in drawing someone to himself. Um, but in these, in these uh, discussions of divine guidance, the different ways the Holy Spirit leads and guides us, remember what we're talking about now is spectacular guidance. But a lot of times when we're seeking the spectacular guidance, we're missing the divine from within. Because the inward witness of the Spirit is 
is so natural, but it's so divine. It's so supernatural, but you're not like, it's not like this, uh, you know, spectacular guidance where you're trying to see something. You're, you're, you know, a vision or a dream or an angel, okay? We're not supposed to seek after angels for guidance, okay? And many times when I've had a vision in my own life, um, I'm not asking for it. It just happens, okay? Probably many times, you know, Joseph wasn't asking for a dream from God, but God spoke to him in a dream to take Mary as his wife, okay? And even in the scriptures, if it's necessary, Paul, there's a story of Paul when he had a premonition of the Spirit. He had an inward witness from the Spirit that if they set sail on the ship, that they are all going to lose their life, okay? And, um... They didn't listen to Paul, okay? So they set sail, and the storm, the huge storm came, and to make a long story short, it said that they didn't eat or drink. I mean, they didn't eat for two weeks. They couldn't hold down any food. The sea was that rough, and they knew they were going to lose their life. It was going to go down, and the night before the ship was going to go down, it said that the Lord stood by Paul and basically said, I have a plan through all this, Paul, you're not going to lose your life. I got a plan. Um, you got to be. You got to come before Rome. You got to come before Caesar. Okay. And uh, even in our life, when we end up in a terrible situation because of someone else's foolishness. Okay. Even when we have a witness of the Spirit from the Lord that that's danger ahead, and they decide to pursue it. And we end up in the middle of this incredible trial because of someone else's disobedience. God has a plan through it. Because of his divine ways, because of his divine wisdom, God can turn any situation around for our good. And so he didn't tell Paul when he got off, you know, from floating in the ocean on a piece of wood to the island of Malta that the first thing that would happen to him is get bit by a snake, a poisonous viper. He didn't tell him that. He'd be so cold that he'd be go to warm himself by the fire and get built, bit by a poisonous snake. And he didn't even tell him that the whole island was going to think he's a god after that and he would tear his clothes and say, no, let me tell you about the true God, Jesus Christ, and they'd all be saved. So God can take the most horrible situations and circumstances in our life and turn them around for good. Okay? But sometimes God chooses to use dreams to warn us or to give us comfort or to even show us our destiny, okay? So, what we've been discussing is the different ways the Holy Spirit leads us in our life, okay? The written word of God and then our conscience, the inward witness of the Spirit, the words of confirmation that come two or three times to confirm what God is doing in our life, the voice of the Holy Spirit that we hear inside of ourselves, Visions, open visions, closed eye visions, and trances, dreams, angels, and the Lord Himself. You know, you hear many stories of missionaries on the on the mission field where you know their house will be surrounded and they're gonna burn their house down or whatever evil they've conjured up to do to the people of God, and all of a sudden they'll see angels surrounding the house. Or sometimes they'll see Jesus himself. And then the whole village comes to Jesus Christ because of this vision of what God shows them. You know, it's, it's amazing because God will use whatever way he needs to use at the time to get people's attention. But remember, most of the time, the word of God will come to you in a word of confirmation of what God has already shown you. You know, through two or three people, He's shown that to you. He's shown it to you through His Word. Always remember that the main way God leads and guides us is through His Word and through the inward witness of the Spirit, which is a text message to your heart. And through words of confirmation where you're, you'll hear two or three times what God is trying to get through to you. So remember that if God chooses to use a supernatural form of guidance, whether it be a vision, 
a dream, or even an angelic visitation, always remember that Satan can appear as an angel of light. Everything has to be tested through the scriptures. Okay? Test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Okay? So, don't seek spectacular guidance. If God chooses to use that, he will use that. Okay? Mary didn't ask for Gabriel to come for, to her. It was in the plan of God for her. Okay? Zacharias didn't ask for an angel to appear before him in the temple. Okay? Paul didn't ask for Jesus Christ to strike him down on the road to Damascus or to stand by him on the ship. They didn't ask for that. It just happened to them. And so, ask God to guide you through his word. Ask God to give you words of confirmation that's right for you. And if God chooses to give you a picture message that speaks more than a thousand words, he will do that. He will give you what you need and when you need it, and it's all so you can fulfill your destiny in him. God, Jesus came to die to give you the chance to enter into your destiny in him. His gift to you is salvation through the forgiveness of your sins through his holy blood that was shed and his resurrection. Your gift back to him is to say, Lord, I give you my life. Take it and do as you please. Help me to fulfill my destiny in you. Help me to follow you. Help me to obey you. And help me to glorify your name in the gifts that you've given to me in my life. That is my gift back to you, Lord Jesus. That's all I can do for you is to give you what you've put in me back to you to win people to you so that heaven can be populated and we can take as many people going to hell, out of hell, and populate heaven by using our gifts for God and to bring glory to Jesus Christ.